many of you know that I am interested in setting up my aquarium, this one, taking it down and setting it up again, um, completely fresh start with it. And so today I would like to talk about filtration in the new setup. Um, I've been watching a lot of father fish videos and of course Dr. Novak as well. <laughs> And I've even watched some of Bentley Pasco and Everyday Fish Keeping. So we'll see what goes. So scientists tell us that there are three kinds of um, filtration that we can have in our aquariums. And actually, this is what happens in nature as well. The three types are aerobic, anaerobic, and anoxic. So these things happen in nature as well, not just in your aquarium, but you know, out there in the oceans and lakes of the world and the rivers. So um, aerobic is the one that we usually use, right? So we have uh, some kind of circulation, air bubbling, something like that. So oxygen is being added to the water all the time and there are what is called aerobic conditions. Now, when you have a deep substrate, you tend to get anaerobic conditions happening under the uh, substrate because not much oxygen or probably no oxygen will reach the bottom of your substrate, especially it's quite, if it's quite deep. Um, so if you have, Father Fish actually recommends one layer of soil and uh, one inch of soil, I mean, and two inches of sand. So um, in that case, the soil would definitely be anaerobic. Um, now, Dr. Novak will tell you that that's a really bad thing because anaerobic bacteria will produce things that are definitely not good for your aquarium. But I'm just wondering, you know, I have a little bit of science in my background. And so I'm just thinking that between the Malaysian trumpet snails that I have and the fact that it's not really that deep of a substrate, I think that I'm going to just go with the deep substrate because, because of ease. I'm I'm just looking for the easy way out, okay? Um, I don't really have, for, for anoxic filtration, which is where you have um, low levels of oxygen, so the bacteria will work on nitrates and sulfates to get oxygen out of them. Um, to do that, they usually use a sump filter. I don't have space for a sump filter. Or the other thing you could do is to set up an under gravel plate, you know, what we used to call under gravel filters, except we won't run the water through as fast as we used to in the old days. So we're going to just slightly bubble through and so to do that, you instead of a very long tube bubbling water, you have a shorter tube. So that means that it will be less flow because the longer the tube and the faster the air is flowing, the bubbles are going up. The faster the bubbles go up and the longer the tube, the more flow you get. So if you can reduce the tube and reduce the bubbles, you can get the flow to be quite low. And that is what causes anoxic conditions to occur. Um, the other thing about anoxic conditions that I'm not too sure about is the length of time that it takes to actually, um, you know, to actually develop the anoxic bacteria. So your conditions may be con anoxic conditions, but that doesn't mean that bacteria are living there. You know, 
bacteria don't care about us. They don't even know us. We, they don't know we exist. They just want to live their little microbial lives and reproduce. That's the two things they want to do. So, so I, a person, a fish keeper can't force those bacteria to live in the anoxic conditions. We can provide anoxic conditions, but that doesn't mean that they are going to come. Eventually, they will probably come. But until then, you're still stuck with whatever, you know, chemical reactions are going on in the aquarium. So I'm kind of very unsure about anoxic filtration, although it is used in wastewater treatment, I know, but there they're actually having a flow and it's all controlled. Ours is you know, our, our stuff is all contained. It's very, very much a contained environment. And even in the wastewater treatment, there's a lot of flow through. So it's not the same water recirculating is what I mean. This is why I'm not really sure that anoxic is the way for me. I'm not going to say anything about somebody else, you know, somebody else may have a sump where they can put uh, their BCB bags and all that stuff. But I just don't have space. We live in a very small house and I just don't have space for that. So that's why I can't have it in my sump. And the reason I don't want it in the aquarium with a plenum in the aquarium is because I want to grow really good plants and I don't feel like I can do that with a plenum there. Maybe Dr. Novak thinks that's possible, but I just don't feel comfortable with it. So that's why I'm going with the deep substrate. I already have um, the right kind of soil soil for growing water plants and I have lots of sand. I just have to wash the sand <laughs> but I'm sure Mike will help me. So <laughs> yeah so I already have the deep substrate so why would I choose something else you know what I mean? That's, that's the way I look at it anyways. But um, okay so that is that settled. So between anoxic and anaerobic, I have chosen to go with the anaerobic. The deep substrate is anaerobic. And you know what I'm thinking too? Um, in that substrate, there must be bands or pockets of uh, anoxic conditions. I can't imagine that there wouldn't be places in the substrate where the conditions are anoxic. So I'm thinking this deep substrate thing is really what I want to do. And you know, an aquarium, in, in my world, an aquarium doesn't stay set up for more than a few years. So. I don't think it's going to matter. I don't want to have my aquarium up for 20 years at a time, let's say. So I don't think it's going to matter whether I have anaerobic or anoxic. But along with that, um, I also want to have aerobic conditions. So I want to have, you know, something bubbling. And for the aerobic part of the filtration, I'm going to go with something modified from what I learned from the king of DIY. <laughs> he taught us in uh, a few years ago, he taught us how to make filters out of water bottles. So I made mine out of a piece of, it's actually a PBS pipe. ABS? Yeah, ABS pipe, <laughs> not PBS. ABS pipe and um, so it had a cap on the end 
Unfortunately, the cap was PVC, so it was black and white. It didn't look that great. But um, the ones I made before are a little too short, so maybe I will remake them. Here is the pipe now. Um, so this is the ABS part and this is the PVS, PVC part. It's open, completely open on the top. And you can see there's holes drilled. This one there, another one there. Holes are drilled all around the bottom. And um, so here, this string is attached to a sponge plug. So usually what I would do is I would just put the sponge plug just above the holes. So the sponge would only come down to about here. That way the water could come in. The water would come in here in the holes. Most of the larger particles would drop down. This would get full of, you know, all kinds of muck. The water would come through the sponge and get filtered a little bit more. Then there would be biomedia in the main part of the pipe. And then at the top, I would have um, polyfill to kind of polish up the water finally. So it worked quite well and um, I think I've got some, it didn't stay, it wouldn't stay upright, <laughs> it would want to float around so I just put some marbles in the bottom. That's what you can hear rattling around. This works really well, I never had any problems with uh, nitrates back then, I had a 20 gallon and one of these in each of the back corners. Uh, yeah. And then I had a, a pump, pumping. So first I would put in the sponge. I keep hitting my uh, stand. Um, first I would put in the stand and then I would put in an air stone and then I would put in my biomedia and then the, the plug of polyfill at the top. That worked really well, really, really well. I was very happy with them. Now this one is only 8 inches tall because my 20 gallon is only 12 inches tall. <laughs> but for, um, for the new setup, I'm going to make some that are maybe twice as long, 15, 16 inches long. I will get more um, filtration power out of them. <laughs> Okay, so next time I think I will talk about either my heating or my lighting for the new setup. And eventually I'm going to get around to buying the plants. I really am looking forward to that part of it because actually when I started fish keeping, I was more into the plants than the fish, <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, confessions coming out now, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, the plant part is a very important part of it for me. So um, I'm really looking forward to buying some new plants. And I'm making a list right now. I've made a list, a short list already, but I'm making a longer list in case, you know, some of them are not available. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching this one. It's so nice of you to put up with me. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. And oh, yeah, thank you for all the lovely comments I've been getting. Thank you very much. It's really nice. Thank you. Keep up. Keep on writing those comments. Okay. We'll talk to you next time then. Oh,